the solid methane free organic of the symposium, and in particular, uh, you know, CB for uh, having given me this opportunity to talk in this uh, symposium on a topic which is slightly related but not totally the same type of uh, talk that you probably would see in the other uh, talks. Uh, but nonetheless, they said that this is of interest and uh, the audience will be interested. So what I'm going to talk about is uh, something related to communication theory and systems rather than information theory. So we may know what uh, information theory says for these kind of systems, but uh, we will take a view of communication theory and systems. So several um, uh, interesting things are going on in the world of wireless communication. And uh, this channel modulation is uh, something you can think of as one of the interesting things that has been going uh, happening, and particularly in the last couple of years that we got interested in this topic. And uh, some of our uh, PhD students and master's students have contributed to this work, and uh, that's what I would like to share. And this work was first from our group, presented in ITA San Diego in 2016, followed by a ECE colloquium in the Ministry of Science uh, ECE department last year. And this is the third time I'm talking to a public class, public audience, other than my own class where I teach this kind of material in my course. So the first uh, collaborator is my PhD student, former ME master of engineering student, who could um, convert uh, that into a PhD program. Right now he's a PhD, former uh, master student in our own group. And Bharat Shamsun, there is a direct PhD, so we admit students directly after BTEC, and uh, leading to a PhD degree. And if you do enough number of courses, you get both an MTEC as well as PhD. So he's right into that program and he's halfway through and he has contributed in the multi-user part of this communication uh, system. And Swaroop Jacob is another master student, right student, and uh, industry was kind of lucky to have him. So he's in industry right now, but he did uh, his project work with me during that time. And these are my three students, and uh, probably uh, six months before or eight months before, we were doing ourselves in our group. But then it turns out that this area, like what we did in large MIMO systems in the decade back, 2007-2008, when we said large MIMO systems are practical, people did not believe, and we had to end up building things to show that it is indeed uh, practical. Now I think people talk about massive MIMO all over the world, and that becomes the basic unit for uh, uh, 5G standards. <laughs> I think this is another instance I recognize, or we recognize, that people are not going to believe just based on some models that you throw, and then that this is the channel, and this channel, if it behaves like this, it is going to get you all the goodies that you are going to say that from an uh, information theory argument that it's going to be possible. So we ended up uh, thinking those lines because uh, in the large MIMO systems we developed using a uh, partnership with the industry and the government, but this time I looked closer to our own department, which is Professor KJ Vinay, who is an RF and antenna expert in our uh, group, in our department, and uh, Aritha is his PhD student. So we talk to each other, and PhD students talk to each other, and that is one thing which uh, I will also, towards the end of the talk, share. Okay. So this is the background, uh, this, this is the outline, I will give a brief background. If I am able to convince that this is a new technique and it's an emerging technique, it's a promising technique to an audience like this, I think my uh, talk will be useful. And I changed the title to be channel modulation because the uh, name which is popularly now appearing in the literature is called media-based modulation. But that media-based modulation, you know, put people off in a different track thinking that it's media, multimedia, you know, images, video, those kind of things. But this media-based modulation is the word which is uh, being uh, used, and uh, that media refers to channel, and channel being wireless channel, okay? And we are going to talk about this media-based, first I'll introduce this media-based modulation because a lot of basic uh, issues, uh, introductions have been done to that modulation. Because if you sign up to that, a lot of things can be done. We signed up to it two years back, and we have got good uh, results in a point-to-point -point setting, use this modulation. In other words, point A to point B, that's a wireless channel in between, fading channel, Typically a MIMO kind of a channel, but use this modulation. There are attractive attributes of this modulation compared to even a regular MIMO modulation. And take that to a multi-user setting. In a cellular uh, setting, you have a base station, multiple users go and then transmit to the base station, and there can you do this MVM, which is the media-based modulation. What are the attractive things that you can get? And some final concluding remarks, and maybe one or two slides on what is that we are doing in the real implementation side of things. Okay, so when I have to set the stage, I have to set the stage where we are talking about because my wireless, a lot of uh, things are happening. One of the things which is happening is in the 30 to 60 gigahertz, or 28 to 60 gigahertz millimetric wave, this talk is not on that. Because everybody may think that this is something very current and we are going to talk about that. No, 
we are going to talk about rich scattering wireless channels. Rich scattering wireless channels, uh, wireless channel for a Wi-Fi scenario in this room or a cellular base station communication in the cellular band, 2.5 gigahertz, 3 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz. So the things that we are building or uh, the other groups who, which started this uh, work have built, they were around 5 gigahertz in a rich uh, multipath environment where the channel fades that we assume to be uh, complex Gaussian hold true by and large. Okay. So this is clear. So we are not talking about other things uh, that are being current and uh, talked about in the standards and so on. Okay, so modulation, I think we all know that uh, modulation is nothing but take a collection of bits, map them to points in complex plane. Points to complex, basic modulation, not carrier modulation, just bits to simple mapping. And this is a classical 16 form uh, modulation alphabet. You, this is zero, this is zero. So symmetric around that uh, point zero, zero. And these are the 16 points. So take four bits, map it to any one of these points. That symbol goes to the air and that gets decoded as four bits at the receiver, conventional modulation. This uh, definition of this alphabet, I call this as A. This is the conventional thing which we are teaching our students in the digital communication, wireless communication. Could be QAM, PSK, and so on. So symbols from the complex alphabet, <coughs> modulation alphabet, can be information bits, classical. Okay, so now what uh, these symbols undergo when they are transmitted through a wireless channel in a bit scattering environment is the channel is going to create melting path, and because of which there is going to be a multiplicative uh, distortion that happens, and that changes the amplitude and phase of the transmitted symbol. Right? So what this shows is this alphabet at the transmitter, after going through a fading channel, and that fades, I will say, H1 is a complex number. That complex number is created by the channel because of the environment and the propagation uh, scenario. Assume that to be complex normal with zero mean and unit variance, and that H1 times X, X is from this alphabet. So H1 X is what the receiver sees. X is from A that we started with. H1 is a complex number. X is a complex number. H1 is a complex number. X is under your control. X is not. H is not under your control. But this constellation is going to be rotated because of this complex number, or shrunk, or expanded. So amplitude. Conventional uh, view that we teach our students, fade is bad because it distorts the amplitude, it rotates the phase, and because of which you have to recompensate for all those things, because of which exponential fall in bit error rate as a function of SNR becomes 1 over SNR, which is very bad, and that is detrimental to your performance. So this is a fade which is uh, a slight rotation and some magnitude distortion. This is, you can call that as a deep fade. The points come closer because H2 is deep, deep fade, and because of which this is the problem. Okay, so we say that fading is bad. Now this view can be made differently because when you say the modulation, I won't have complex numbers. I don't need structured complex numbers, not necessarily, right? And suppose if I say this set of points, 16 points, arbitrarily choose from complex Gaussian code book. Right? 16 numbers complex. They are all. They are different. These are 16 numbers by design. Why do we choose that? Because detection is easy. Everything is simple and so on and so forth. And the minimum distance is easy, easy to calculate. Or you start with what the demand that you want and so on and so forth. But here, then we pick random numbers. How I create? That's a different question. Okay. But let this be the alphabet. They are so near. You may say that they are so near. So demand is going to be very bad because you are randomly choosing and so on. But suppose if you take this as the alphabet, and that alphabet is the channel fade themselves. Suppose if they are, um, you transmit uh, a tone, let's say, a tone, not a complex number, a tone, and you say that channel is going to distort it, H1 into 1, right? And then another instance, H2, another instance, and there is M array, let's say, M channel fades, right? that are created in an engineering fashion, not a mathematical fashion, I create an engineering uh, way of generating these numbers that is the channel's response to a tone. Okay, all I have to create is, if, it is, if I have to create 16 numbers, I will create 16 different ways of generating it based on four bits of information. Okay, so that if I can do, then this itself is an alphabet. This is a fake, but this is also an alphabet. And I can send a tone, and this H1, H2, H3 up to H, 
what was the M, M array, that is the, this is the modulation. This is a different view, right? This view uh, is what is interesting here, and I think this is to take roots, yeah. Okay, this should be known to the receiver, need not be known to the transmitter. So this is fundamentally different. So we will come to that. Receiver should know, and in conventional modulation also, this has to be known to the receiver, right? 16 form means this has to be known to the receiver. Transmitter has to know the mapping, right? Whereas here, if I can generate in such a way that it goes on the air, I don't care. I transmit something. Only receiver has to know what the map is. Transmitter need not know. So there is no feedback, no, there is no CSID. All I can say is take four bits, generate in some way, in an engineering way, RF way, antenna way, generate this point. And that point remains, let's say, static over a period of time. Suppose I use a uh, long coherence time channel, and uh, communication is happening through that. So one complex point is going to be this, another 0, 0, 0, 4, 1, 1, 1. All realizations will give different uh, fates. Now, receiver knows this, let's say. Right? Transmitter need not know. Very different from the conventional thing that we teach in our courses. Right? And now the question is, OK, this is nice. What are the benefits? OK, fine. But how do you generate this? Okay, how do you create this? The question is how to create this uh, alphabet. You can use transmitter antennas, you can use RF mirrors. The talk is about RF mirrors, which are also called as parasitic elements, which are capacitive elements, varactors, pin diodes, and so on, whose resonant frequency is going to be controlled by a current or voltage. Okay? That current or uh, voltage will be information bits to me, which means instead of a continue, continuous signal being controlling the resonant frequency in an analog modulating sense, I will use a digital one and zero, and distinctly change the parasitic elements resonant frequency, because which there is a characteristics of that uh, uh, element which you are controlling. Okay? So R of mirrors is the key element to look for, or any parasitic elements. I will now say that parasitic elements are not new to communications. In fact, beam forming has been the major beneficiary of using parasitic elements. You don't have to beam form in a certain direction using several antennas. You can have one antenna, but several parasitic elements and then tune their voltages so that you can beamform in a certain direction, analog beamform, right? Take that element. Don't use it for beamform. Use it for modulation. That is the story. Okay. Now, when we look back, um, uh, where, are, where were these ideas? These ideas were there before, but then they were not called as channel modulation. One thing which has been very popular I, I think it's not gone into the mainstream yet. Only, only in the academic setting, papers, uh, papers being written in an exponentially growing form is spatial modulation, space shift keying, and generalized spatial modulation. So this is an example. Let me just ex uh, explain what is uh, this SSK. We know ASK, we know FSK. This is space shift keying. I give you empty antenna elements. When I say antenna elements, I'm differentiating that with the notion of antennas. When I say antenna, generally there is a notion of R of chain being associated with that. There's a transmit, you have a baseband converted to an IF frequency, up converted to an RF frequency, power amplified and transmitted. That is an RF chain, right? Typically in a MIMO system, if you have NT transmit antennas, when we say, we think in our mind that NT RF chains are there, one for each of the transmit antenna. But in this case, I'm going to have only one RF chain. So hardware-wise, I'm going down drastically. If I have two of the six antennas, only one RF chain, Okay, what I'm going to do is, there is a control bit which is missing. There should be a control line which is not there. I take, let's say this is 256, and this is, you take 8 bits, right? 8 bits, put a tone here, plain tone, right? 8 bits control which one of these 256 is selected. In other words, if it is NT, log NT to the base 2 bits will decide which one is going to be activated at that point in time. So, by lighting one antenna at a given channel use, you are conveying eight bits, or in other words, in general, log nt to the base two bits. So this is spaceship key. And the advantage of this is you get MIMO-like advantages with only one RF chain, which is a big problem in massive MIMO systems and large MIMO systems. We push this idea of large MIMO system, but we realize that the RF uh, hardware complexity is going to be very high. And this is a good solution in the sense that you have only one hour of chain, but you feed to multiple antennas, you convey bits through indexing. In other words, 
there is no complex number which is flying on the air. There is no uh, C1, C2, C3, whatever that alphabet we talked about. Right? It's a simple term, one. Right? But look at this, nr equal to one. Let's say one v one receive antenna for the simple case. One v one. When this guy is activated, this vector, which I call this is nr cross one vector, which is h one, one first antenna to the receiver. Okay? This is going to be a scalar complex number, which is the h one we talked about. Right? If I have an array of receive antennas, then this is going to be a vector. So this h one is the vector modulation symbol. Not a modulation symbol, but a vector modulation symbol. And this represents a modulation symbol. This represents a modulation symbol. This represents a modulation symbol. This also is the channel. So you have to know H as an alphabet, set of complex numbers, H as a channel matrix. You have to do both at the receiver. So this, uh, the conveying of information is just choose which antenna is active, and the receiver should know a priori all this alphabet by measurement and pilot transmissions, and then map it to the right um, uh, H that was likely, most likely transmitted using ML rule or other rules, and then decode ND, log NT to the base 2 bits, spaceship key. And this is not new, that has been there since 2000, uh, 2001 in VTC paper. Subsequently, numerous papers have been written. We also have sort of written quite a bit of uh, papers on this. So this is also, we should call that as channel modulation. Although it's called a spaceship modulation uh, key, we are essentially using only H as the modulation alphabet. Okay, what are the drawbacks with this setting? The drawback with this is I want to increase the rate. When I have to increase the rate, I have to increase, in this case, NT. Right? NT. <coughs> but how does that rate grow logarithmically? Right? So that is a problem. If I have to have 8 bit, <coughs> bits per channel use, 2 physics. If I have to get 9, 512. 10, 1024. It, it is like capacity grows logarithmically with the SNR. Right? Not a good thing. But put a min of NTNR in my mind, we are very happy. Something similar, it grows, we are happy, but logarithmically in NT. Not so good. But still, no interference. Right? <coughs> Decoder can be very simple because there is no interference and so on and so forth. Very lot of good things. Okay? So now we will come to instead of antennas, I said here, you can use to create this alphabet using transmit antennas, or you can use parasitic elements. Okay, I already gave some glimpse of what is parasitic element, basically capacitors and uh, characters and so on. And they can be used for beam forming, direction of arrival estimation, selection, switch diversity, reconfigure, there is an array of application, signal processing. But these two papers are key to us. This is what we got attracted to through <coughs> Professor Amir Kandani in Waterloo. In 2013, he had an ISID paper. And that is here, Amit Kandani, media-based modulation, a new approach to wireless communication, ISIT 2013. Okay? And he introduces the notion of, I will create these fades based on RF mirrors. I will have RF mirrors, I will control 1 or 0. Depending upon the 1 or 0, I will tell the receiver that this is the bits that we are going to transmit implicitly, not by sending a complex number, but implicitly. Right? But when we look back, the idea was even there before by this group, Papadias and Ramjit in 2009 itself, as what is called as areas, aerial modulation. What they did was, I want to send 4 bits per channel use. They used the 8 PSK number, but that 8 PSK number they sent through either one radiation pattern or another radiation pattern configured by a parasitic element. That parasitic element is going to be controlled by a voltage. For that voltage, there is going to be a radiation pattern. For a digital one, there is going to be another radiation pattern. Receiver is trying to know this difference. Four bits, instead of sending 16 PSK or 16 form, you send 8 PSK and send one bit through the, what they call this as aerial modulations, indexing two antenna beams or other patterns, right? But he made is more general, and that is media-based modulation. This is it. This uh, we create, I think uh, he created this, and I'll show you a hardware uh, that he built. The good thing is, he built something in hardware, and he did not stop at ISIT 2013. He went to 2014, very next year, showed some good properties of this channel, and then later um, put it in an archive paper, and there is no more paper, other than one ICC paper. Only four papers, but four are very good papers, in my opinion, and we followed it up. Now, maybe if you see the literature, maybe around 20 papers may be there, not more than that. So it's a very fertile area for us to make use of it. 
So if I can explain what this is, there is a transmitter. This transmitter is going to be having a tone being transmitted. Okay? Instead of multiple antennas, I will have one antenna, one antenna. But this bangle, you see, this bangle is going to have multiple parasitic elements in a cylindrical form as one form of realization. Capital M, RF, RF mirror, that is the number of mirrors that are there. And M, RF bits can go and then excite these guys. You control these uh, individual uh, mirrors with ones and zeros. And because of this, essentially what happens is the near field uh, characteristics of this uh, transmitter is going to be perturbed by the information bits. Right? There is an antenna, there is a near field, and there are scatterers around it. And those scatterers are near field scatterers, and they are controlled scatterers. They are digitally controlled scatterers. There are information bits based controlled scatterers. So in other words, I can uh, perturb this in the near field, in the far field, that uh, small perturbations will be magnified. And that will give independent realizations of the channel fits. So in other words, if I have MR of mirrors, I can have MR of bits being conveyed in one channel. This is, in my opinion, equivalent of a MIMO when you say min NTNR log one, log 1 plus SNR. Here, the previous SSK which was known was having log NT to the base 2 bits, because which every BPCU you have to exponentially increase number of antennas. But here, because first of all there is only one RF chain in this case also. All these are only digitally controlled, very simple hardware. And if more number, linear, they grow linearly. The number of bits per channel use grows linearly. And all other things are the same as before, here. Whatever we saw here, same thing is here. Engineering wise, you are doing a much uh, better way of doing things. So your MBM channel alphabet is going to be having two power MR, okay? Two power MR, because there is going to be MR of bits, all zeros to all one, two power of them is going to be the alphabet size. Here the alphabet size was NT. NT. One of them, one zero 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 zero, every one antenna active at a time. But here, each bit, uh, the MR of bits, and because of which all combinations are going to be two power MR of, because of this MR of bits in one channel use can go, and that is the key. So this media-based modulation can do a lot better in performance and complexity and cost. So whatever we talk about as MIMO in the 5G or 4G, when we grow, we may grow into this direction is what I believe. And can ah. That is called a generalized SSK. So you can take all being active using NT RF chains as one extreme, one RF chain, but any one of the NT as another extreme. In between, you can call gen yes. That gives more rate and better performance. In fact, both extremes need not be the best. NT antennas are given. You can have a parameterized number of RF chains, one to NT. And one is not as good, NT is not also as good, but somewhere in between there is an optimum in terms of more rate, better performance. Yes. Okay. So, now, okay. So, he called this as a new frontier. I think uh, beyond this uh, two papers, uh, that group was uh, not publishing anything more, but I think he believed that this is a new frontier. And uh, we'll see whether it's true. Okay. So, I think this already I told you. SSK, antennas, mirrors, Exponential increase in NT is needed, whereas this is linear in MRF. And the problem is now you have to channel, learn the channel which is exponential in time for the pilot estimation. Here, NT antennas means if I have a pilot matrix which is NT cross NT, that is fine. But here, because I have MRF and 2 power MRF is the alphabet, I have to learn exponentially uh, more involved uh, channel estimation. Okay, this is another thing which you may want to uh, keep. This I think this is uh, proved in uh, his uh, ISIT 2014 paper. Later we gave an alternate uh, proof in one of our papers. The idea is the following. You use one transmitter antenna. You use NR receive antennas. And take this mirrors to infinity. Right? You will get NR parallel channel AWGN capacity. I think 
uh, proof, proofs and all are there in these papers. We have also have an alternate paper. But this is interesting to us. What it says is, this is two times AWGN, log one plus SNR. This is three times log one plus SNR. This is four times log one plus SNR. This is MIMO, right? MIMO, NT transmit antennas, NT receive antenna, NR receive antennas. But here, this red one, this is media-based modulation. Mirrors being increased. As mirrors get increased, the capacity grows closer to NR times parallel. This, this is the result that is there, and this is very, very attractive. What that means is I can have one transmit antenna, but still by using passive uh, parameter, uh, parasitic elements, you can go very close to NR parallel channel, which is very attractive. Okay. So this is the picture which uh, I would like to share, uh, whatever he has put in his website, and he has put it in uh, a YouTube kind of uh, talk in his uh, website. So this is a real, real implemented one. So this is the dipole at the middle, and it is implemented in uh, 5 gigahertz. And this is a cylinder, and this cylinder has 14 mirrors. Each one is a, like a card, 4 centimeter by 5 centimeter, 4 centimeter by 5 centimeter. And inside, you have a diode. This is the typical, this unit. This is the mirror. This is the mirror. There are 14 of them. And this is going to be a set of pin diodes. And they are going to be controlled by one information bit which is going to be switching on the, those diodes are off. Okay. What that essentially does is when it is on, these guys will behave like a reflector. They will just reflect the whole thing back. If it is one, it will be transparent. That's, a, that's, a, that's why the name is RF mirrors. If there's a digital one which is controlling this uh, mirror, it will be transparent or opaque. One or zero. And because of which the one zero combination of all the 14 bits will change the uh, channel fate because the perturbation of this thing, because this presents itself as a cavity resonant. And the way they have implemented is this. Now you can see this. This is four realizations. 14 bits are there, four realizations. It's arbitrary. It's really a random channel fate, and that is what it is. Now, these are what we call this as this H phase, H phase, H phase. <coughs> This 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 phase. Okay. So this is an antenna way of engineering things for you, and this this is the alphabet that they have generated. See, this is for a indoor keeping a transmitter here, a receiver here. Use a ray, tra ray uh, tracing tool using RF, and then use this uh, thing which they have built. Model them in your uh, RF uh, simulation tool. Create 32 symbols, and this is five bit. Uh, MRA 32 here for a indoor, this is for outdoor. So this is a practical way of generating. So this, this is the main, main point. This is feasible. Now, how it is going to perform in a real scenario is a different question. And based on this, we wanted to see how far we can go in terms of performance. Okay. Yeah. So back to the issue, what happens to the distribution of the channels and the All HS are CN0. The assumption is these mirrors, when you place, and the environment that you are going to deploy this mirror and receiver, they will give the independent phase, which are C0. Every possible combination of these mirrors, Yes, OK. That's a valid question. So what uh, we say here is this 2 power MRF is the size of the signal set. For every element in the signal set, there is a fade vector, and that fade vector is independent from realization. Now, when I say realization, 2 power m are of bit realizations, uh, bit combinations. Yeah, independent, but we people ask this question. Like last time when he said it's possible, but how about uh, channel, what do you call, spatial uh, correlation? Now they say the same same question. Are they really independent? Have you measured? Have you seen? And so on and so forth. But assuming that they are going to happen, the benefits are huge. So when the benefits are huge, yeah. So what stops you from doing the same thing as uh, can you can you elaborate? Can you one more, one more. Kind of antenna simulation to, in the receiver to having an artificial Okay. So there will be received beamforming if you want to use it for beamforming purposes. See, transmit beamformers can have parasitic elements controlling the weight the weight vector you optimize to have the beam. Same thing, receive beam direction also you can do with the parasitic elements at the receive side. Transmit. 
want the MR represented by R1 through V. We want the map from the information bits. So information bits are at the transmitter. I can. You have MR RF change at the receiver. Now, yeah. but what you are saying is you can improve the uh, hardware complexity by using this receiver. Is that is that your is that your point? Yeah, I, I have not thought about it. We have not thought about it. I think it's very open and very wide. The wild is not right now. Okay. Yeah. So any any questions so far? So this this is the basic. If this uh, gets carried away, I think that is half of it done. Okay. Then we said, okay, we understood this because Amir Kandani sent out the whole community an email saying that okay, this is important, interesting. Take a take a look. So we took a look at the paper. We saw his video. We did not understand much. But then we wanted to repeat and then see whether it makes sense. And we believe that it makes sense. But we have to do something beyond what they did. Right? So in that uh, aspect, what we ended up doing was generalize this MBM by saying that I will not do only tone. First of all, one enhancement is don't send a tone. Send a complex number, which is a traditional uh, modulation on top of it. Instead of a tone, send a 16-com number. So you have two modes of sending information, a regular quant symbol or a PSK symbol plus uh, index bits, which is uh, so-called uh, RF mirror index bits. Okay, but in addition to that, I can say, in the spatial modulation thing in SSK, what we said was, you have a bunch of transmitters. You can choose one among that that gives antenna index bits. So what we did and ended up doing was generalized antennas, RF mirrors, and conventional quant symbols together, and that we call that as a GSM uh, MBM system. Let me go there here. This is the system. Okay, so this is, uh, in my opinion, whatever we know is the mother of all kind of uh, modulation architecture. A CISO is a simple scheme where you take log m to the base two bits, pass it through a form, transmit through the RF chain. Let's say NTU is the number of these units, NRF is the number of RF chains, and mirrors are MRF. Okay. Suppose if I say NRF is 1, NTU is 1, this is a simple CISO channel. One antenna, one symbol being transmitted in one channel, this is the channel. Suppose if I have NRF equal to NTU without these mirrors, then it becomes classical minor. Classical mono, which is NT into log M to the base 2, this segment without rings. But suppose if I have NT antennas, and then as he pointed out, that instead of activating one antenna at a time, I will activate NRF antenna time at a time, and NRF is more than one. Then that is called um, antenna activation pattern based indexing, which is take NT, you choose NRF, log NT, log of that to the base two bits, will choose how many, uh, not how many, which NRF among this NT should be activated. So that information bits go through antenna selection, and each antenna which is active, MRF bits go. Anyway, I don't know whether I made sense. It is a very generalized scheme where generalized spatial modulation along with MBM. You, we were working on these two. We were working on these two as generalized spatial modulation. Now, these mirrors come from Kandani's group. We take this and this becomes whatever that architecture is, MIMO, CISO, CMO, uh, GSM, SM, SMP, they are all subset of this for specific cases of this. Okay. So, Let's see. This is uh, what we have as information bits which are conveyed. This MBM transmit unit can be indexed. How many bits? Log NT, you choose NRF to the base 2 number of bits. And MRA modulation on each of the active antennas are at TU, which is NRF times log M to the base 2 bits. And mirrors on each of the active unit, which is MRF into NRF. So this many bits per channel is sent. So rates can be. So the beauty is the following. Let me equations being apart. Look at it from a systems engineer point of view. If I have to rate, increase the rate, MIMO is the thing that you have been told that min NTNR is going to give you a rate increase, just linearly, right? But that comes with the caveat that you put RF chains, right? This is what we say that is possible. Like NT log into the base two is the spatial multiplexing we blast. But this says NT times RF chain. But now I can have NRF. In the simple case, NRF can be one, and there are other ways to convey information which is not hardware expensive or complicated. They are not going to be complicated because they are just passive elements, small units which can be controlled digitally 
and they are going to give you linearly in the number of meters. And again, you can do antenna selection because RF chains can be less. You can switch which are going to be used and because of which RF chains can be less. So these two are going to be very good compared to MIMO because MIMO you're putting whole bonus on so many transmitters and only those transmitters. Okay. Right. So let me see. I'll So let, let's see how it behaves. Okay, the system is uh, understood. So I let me not go into the system uh, thing. So this I think is a signal to noise ratio versus a bit of rate performance, which we always look as look at as the performance measure. Okay, I'll pick three points. Okay, so since we say one R of chain, NT antennas, and one complex modulation symbol as spatial modulation, take this curve. Right, I want to get eight bits per channel. In a conventional modulation, I will use two physics points. So I'm not using that, I'm not showing that because that is going to be too bad. Two physics point in a fading channel is going to be very bad. So I'm not showing that. But if I say I have four antennas, I have one R of chain. So four, uh, I will send two bits, log four to the base two, which is two bits to choose one antenna. And remaining six bits I will take from 64 point. So this is one way of getting eight BBC. 64 point one complex and two bits on indexing antenna gives me 8 and that performance is this. Okay. Another one I will pick for comparison for quick. Red one. 8 BCCU, if you are given 4 transmitter antenna, I will use uh, 4 pound. And on 4 pound, 2 bits on each, 4, 8. So this is classical money. Just to, to make you believe at least for the time being, I can say CMO. 1 transmitter antenna, uh, 6 mirrors, 6 mirrors, 1 hour of chain, right? And 4 pound. 6 bits because of mirrors, 2 bits because of 4 quant, and my performance is this. No, you don't. You don't have any control. See, the, you leave it to the channel. Right. So you, what is the time to look like it? Ah, okay. So I'll show you some <coughs> pictures. This sort of. Ah. So this is what it is going to look like, right? By okay. Let let me put it this way. First of all, we assume that from an analytical model point of view, all are IAD Gaussian. Okay, that you leave it. But then don't go to the hardware yet. But go to R of simulators which is not MATLAB simulators, R of simulators. And these kind of numbers are from R of simulators. Okay? So they are like this. And they can be symmetrized. They may look like this, but with a little bit of rotation and some processing, this can be symmetrized. Right? And you can know the demon properties of this alphabet and other things. But that all can be learned at the receiver. So you don't have any control except the channel works for you. The way you can look at it is, suppose 32 bits are 32 points are there, the internet distances right, between various points may not be to your advantage. For example, these guys two are very close. So in practice, what you may see is d min is very bad because of which you may not get anything out of it. So what you can do probably is you use 36, uh, 32 complex numbers, do a selection, meaning pick points which are far apart and then use like this. This is 32 points, but I want only uh, 8 points, 2, 4, 6, 8. So I can find those, the, I look at the length of the each vector or pairwise distances between each vector and then pull out this. So this is the best you could do, but this needs receiver to do all 32, all uh, points, <coughs> find out the distances or some criteria to pick up those alphabet. Tell the transmitter, this is the map you should use. If you use all mirrors, you don't have to do anything. But if you want to do carefully to space the points away, mirrors are not expensive. Put more mirrors. But some of them may create fades which are very close by. Eliminate by, by selection at the receiver. Tell 
instead of uh, 32, use only 8. So it becomes an 8 array system. So that is what it is. That, that can be done. So, so this has to be done 50 coherence times. Yes. So we, we should not get carried away that it's going to be, going to be applied in a mobile environment to start. It should be like a Wi-Fi like environment or a base station to base station. So, yeah, it's going to be over every core in the city. Okay, so this is one, one, one point. Okay, so what we ended up show, showing was um, he uh, picked up those signal points based on the length of the vectors, constellation vectors. But we said that we can do better by looking at the so-called Euclidean distance separation, and that used this kind of improvement. Because for the first time he created the idea, we just uh, expanded on it, and because of which we could do, and that we called, we could uh, gain advantages in terms of diversity, we improved the diversity orders, and so on and so forth. Okay? So antenna selection is something we may have to do in practice, in practice, because there is no control, and if they are very close by, then your performance is bad. Okay. Now, I'm going to, this is point to point. Okay. The, the idea is um, point to point, performance being good, right? This is a point to point transmitter, there's a receiver, and in this, you have all the special cases of signaling, which we know in the past as special cases. But this, if you use all the dimensions, the ultimate point, takeaway point is this. How do you send information bits? If you send it through complex plane, it is bad. Because if you want to push more bits into the complex plane, I have to space points closer for the same signal power. For the same signal to noise ratio or the same average power, if I have to send, spend more bits, I have to push bits closer. And that also we teach log M form if you keep on increasing M. <coughs> SNR required to achieve a probability of error is going to increase, right? So complex plane signaling is not good. If I can totally can get rid of this complex plane signaling, that will be ultimate, right? But then we end up seeing a yeah, 16 form is, uh, yeah, 64 form is in one system, but it becomes four form because bits gets distributed in other domains. Antenna indexing, mirror indexing, anything that you use as index modulation is going to be better because you don't lose that MRA signaling uh, drawback as in quant. So that is the main takeaway. You can reduce the bits that you put on the complex plane, which is very inefficient, to increase the data rate. You can use orthogonal signaling. You don't lose. In fact, if you do orthogonal signaling with M intended <coughs> infinity, you will achieve capacity. That's not what we are doing in traditional many applications, which is quant. 1024 quant, we say that it is great and uh, that is going to be the best way to do. We are compromising on power. But here, 1024 can bring down to 16 because I put remaining in other domains like indexing. Indexing is an implicit way of modulation and media-based modulation is one instance of a cute engineering idea of indexing R elements which are used for mirrors in the uh, beam forming in the past but now for the internet. Okay. So last few minutes I'll just show that it is not that it should be remaining in point-to-point -point setting or only in the traditional uh, paper writing setting. It can be taken to multi-user setting. Okay, this is the multi-user setting, it's a massive micro setting. This is the 5G architecture. You have a, one of the 5G architectures being considered. Hundreds of antennas, tens of users. So each user transmits a complex symbol, and K symbols are transmitted, and you decode it to the receiver. This is the base station. This is the 5G massive micro architecture. Now this has one RF chain. I will keep that, because that's your cell phone. I do not want to load that cell phone with the MIMO with the more antenna. So I will still do the same thing with the MBM, multi-user MBM. What I will do is one RF chain, okay? But I can have mirrors, not big, but eventually you can shrink. Once there is performance advantage, cost advantage, size advantage, everything, you will do all the engineering, right? Bring that inside, two, uh, two mirrors, three mirrors, and so on. So load MRF bits on that, plus some quam, and that quam size can be reduced for a given b 2 c So this is what we study, okay? And to say the, uh, this, this we presented last year, and uh, Bharat is the student. And if you want to see the uh, performance, I will straight away go. Okay, this is the representation of this MIMO channel. Y equal to HX plus N. This is the received observed vector. This H is the composite multi-user channel vector uh, matrix. And these are essentially the individual users transmit signal vectors, which are essentially sparse vectors. I did not highlight it for lack of time, but they are in the papers, they are sparse. A K user MBM transmitter system is essentially a K sparse system. A single uh, signal vector that is transmitted from my MBM transmitter is going to have only one non-zero element 
which is that one symbol remaining are all zeros. So because of it, you can do uh, sparse signal equity algorithms, which are then the literature. This we used it and then looked at the so for example OLP cosines and uh, substrate pursuit, which are very popular in uh, the couple sensing or the sparse security techniques. We just used it. Some variation. This is the basic algorithm, but we may have to do some because structurally there are some dependencies. I cannot have non-zero anywhere in the vector. Uh, first user will have one, second user will have one, and so on. So it is sparse, but there is a structure to it. So you can use some uh, variations to the well-known algorithms to make sure that those constraints are met. And those algorithms, if we use, so on the yes, this is a multi-user uplink. Okay, initially you have to again think of it as a multi-user application which is fixed. You, one use case would be a fixed transmitter and so can use. Yes, this is an issue, but uh, uh, believe me, in channel estimation, in high Doppler channels and all, <coughs> there are new things which are happening. So, channel estimation, once it is identified as a problem, there are fixes that will come all over the place. And if there is overhead to be added, they will add. Because right now you see a 4G waveform, it is not that it is overhead wise small. Pilots are all over. So you have to make it work so that the system becomes operational and it makes the uh, difference compared to the previous generation. Yeah, it is an issue. Channel estimation, pilots. In fact, some of our new papers are on that. In fact, we have studied the performance analysis in the uh, uh, presence of channel estimation errors. A lot of performance analysis papers can be written. All of whatever you have done in the past, in fact, we have started writing in full duplex, cooperative relaying, whatever, you just rehash everything again. Because this has to be a new story told in the old, uh, you know, framework, but with a new set, that's it. But the point is the last figure I will show and then maybe close. Okay. Uh, so how much time? Over? One minute. Okay. One minute. So see, this is uh, another thing which I would say. Uh, this is number of receiver antenna versus bit error rate. And uh, this is the conventional 5G that we are being talked about. This is 5G performance, which if you have an array of receive antennas, use conventional modulation to achieve a 7 BPCU, which is a user 5 BPCU. This is what 5G is. And this is what MBM is. So in between, there is something which we talked about, a spatial modulation, generalization, spatial modulation. These modulations are the next generation, 6G modulation. We are harping on 5G, which is here. But this is set to pick up in practice. And this is even more. This, thousands of papers have been written, theses have been written, including our own student thesis. This first thesis will come from our group maybe in another one year time and so on. Papers are written in the tens now, but it should grow in the thousands and then industry should look at it. So I'm saying that this could be the next decade, next decade modulation, if MIMO modulation is the previous decade modulation. So because it says whatever this guy, current 5G could not achieve with 600 antennas, this guy can achieve with 120 or 200 antennas. So this is the big takeaway. So this is what IIC is doing and uh, in terms of implementation. People will not believe. If I put this, people will not believe. Believe me. They won't believe. Okay? We have gone through this. <coughs> so we started building and this is uh, dipole. This is with uh, Professor Vinay and Arikra and my students. These are two students. And, uh, this is being... Uh, see, right now we have come down to... My student does MATLAB simulation modeling and analysis. Arikra student now does RF simulation. Okay? Based on the RF simulation, this is our generated alphabet. This is RF simulated thing. And couple that with the MATLAB simulation of bitter rate. This is Naresh's output. This is Aritra's output. So they talk to each other. Generate it from RF tool. Put it in a MATLAB tool. Now they are building the hardware. We are building the FPGA. So we want to build the system and then show. And I have the experience of building a 16 by 16 massive MIO uh, system and what it is in hardware. I did not think that it could be built in a university setting, okay, at least in India. And it, we, we ended up uh, building it with the government and the industry and so on. But with this, I have only one dipole, right? One dipole. I can just outsource using a USRP, one RF chain, nothing more. This is also very cheap. When I talk to uh, KJ Vinay, he will do it, right? And we have made several iterations. There are four mirrors, four bits. So we are trying to get a 16 form equivalent system with one transmit antenna with four mirrors controlled by four, uh, four information bits. These are the simulated ones. And hopefully we will achieve this in the real 
practical <coughs> if uh, everything goes well. We do not know how it will go, but we hope for that uh, for the next decades modulation is good to have a good uh, impact. And with this, I will conclude. Complexity. I think it may go to practice, practice sooner if those things are worked out. 